How's everybody doing today? All right. All right, all right, all right. This is Risk, AKA Risk First Reward from Team RBR Trading. Today, I'm making an unboxing video for you of my new helium miner. So, in this video, we're gonna answer three questions, okay? One, what is helium? Two, can I make money on it? And three, is it worth paying $2,000 on eBay right now, or should I wait four to six months and order through Bobcat for $600? Okay, so as you guys know, I'm always trying to find new ways to make you money. And I don't just limit myself to finding stocks. If I did, I wouldn't be doing my job, okay? So first off, what is Helium? So we've talked about new crypto coins that come out and how there's a lot of money to be made on the right ones. Well, we last looked at hard drive mining, also known as Chia, okay? And this was a big craze, and it wasn't the first hard drive miner by any means, but it was one of the latest and biggest launches that hard drive mining has seen, okay? And I was telling a lot of you about it at the time, and did a lot of research, uh, and in the end, found out that it actually wouldn't be profitable, despite what a lot of YouTubers were saying at the time, okay? I almost dropped... Ten or fifteen thousand dollars on a Chia mining rig, right? And for some of the reasons we're going to talk about in this video, I decided against it. Okay, a lot of the reasons that I like helium were the same reasons that I disliked Chia in the end. Okay, so what is helium and why should you care? Well, to understand what helium is, you first have to understand the IoT or Internet of Things, which essentially is a network of things, right? Quotations around things, such as Lime scooters, dog collars with tracking tags on them, just to name a few. And all of these things are interconnected to a decentralized network. Emphasis on that part, decentralized. The key difference here is a normal network requires a password to connect, needs human intervention, right? Instead, the Internet of Things runs on what you traditionally think of as just a low frequency radio signal, okay? This signal can travel a lot farther, but it doesn't transfer near as much data. Thus, a lot of the devices are able to run on much less battery power, which means more compact devices, right? So what provides this signal? Well, that's where helium hotspots come in. The hotspots are connected to your home network and then communicate with things, okay? This is allowed small tracking tags that can last for months or years because they don't need a power intensive Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to communicate and they aren't limited by that short range. So let's look at a real world example. I leave open the front gate and my one-year-old Pomeranian dog, Toto, who's wearing a Samsung Smart Tag Tracker, escapes. Okay? He makes it several blocks from the house, well out of my Wi-Fi service area. Now, my neighbor, Jim, down the road, has a helium miner. Okay? So he has a helium hotspot, or a hotspot connected to the Internet of Things. Right? doesn't just have to be a helium hotspot. So when Toto passes by, his location is then updated in the app. Not only this, but I can also send a signal through the network via the app that would then make Toto's collar begin to ring, making it easier to find him, okay? This is just one of the ways that this technology can be used, okay? Uh, this is just an example that's most relevant to me, all right? Uh, now, you all know, a while back, I broke a story to you all that Comcast was going to begin opting all of their customers in to share their Wi-Fi signal, part of that signal going into the Internet of Things for free and as a public hotspot without compensating you. And then what do they do? They turn around and they charge for the service by the hour, mind you, and make a killing. 
okay? So a lot of my members at that time that I told about this opted out. So I'm telling you guys about it again now. If you wanna opt out, you can search opt out Xfinity hotspot on Google, okay? That's opt out Xfinity hotspot, okay? All right, so now you know what the Internet of Things is. So let's talk about where helium really starts to come into play here, right? Like we've talked about before, helium is a decentralized wireless infrastructure powered by what we call the people's network. And you're going to find out why we call it the people's network, okay? So this network is in turn powered by the helium blockchain. Users purchase and set up a hotspot, and in return, they get helium tokens based on an algorithm, okay? How much helium you get is going to depend on your location. As you can probably see on the computer, I've got this map pulled up here. We'll look at that here in a minute. So as of today, October 16th, 2021, helium is trading at $21.44 at the time of this video, okay? I know when the hotspots first came out, a lot of people were getting three, three, four, five coins per day. Some people were actually getting closer to 10. That's $200 a day. <laughs> That's a full-time job, right? So even if you get one token per day, you would pay for your investment in no more than two months, okay? In a lot of cases, and in most cases, from what I've seen, these miners are paying themselves off in days or weeks. This is gonna be dependent on a few factors now and it's not gonna be right for everyone. But the good news with this device is you're not fighting against whales, okay? You're not fighting the big whales that have tens of thousands of dollars to throw at this, okay? Everybody is on even ground here. So why is this important? Well, anyone who's mined crypto understands that you have to look at how long it will take to recoup your investment, right? Because miners have a high price, and on top of that, they have a short life, okay? So if you paid $10,000 for an ant miner, and you could mine $40 per day of Bitcoin, it would take you 13 months to pay off your miner. Now, a lot of times these miners can only last for 24 months, sometimes less, right? Factor in the price gouging going on right now with GPUs because of the chip shortage, and it's not possible to make any money GPU mining right now. If you're paying the prices that are on eBay, which are usually 10 times the retail price, there's no room for profit, right? So another reason that the Helium network is truly the people network. Now let's talk about that. With most coins, whales, right? Whales, people with lots of money, right? They jump in in the very early days when these new tokens come about and they buy up massive amounts of these miners. And then they end up holding a large stake in the coin, right? Now, because of this, it becomes impossible to compete for the small guy because everything is based on algorithms. And so theoretically, you could mine for Bitcoin for 20 years if you mined independently and never find one, right? Now, you could also get lucky and find one in a day, which happens too, right? But this is why people mine in groups called farms and then divide up the earnings based on who has how much mining power, right? Well, with helium, you could go buy 100 miners, right? Don't do that. And you could hook them all up in your house. But guess what? Unless you put them at least 1,000 feet apart or 300 meters, which is what the website calls for, that's what their own website says, you are going to get the same amount of coins. Now this is huge for the little guy. And this is why I'm able to actually recommend this to you guys, right? I'm recommending this to over, over 15,000 followers and nearly 1,000 members to date, right? I wouldn't do that. I would never ever endorse a product to you guys unless I truly believe you can make money on it, okay? Now, if you have an office or a business that you can also plug in at, then you could go buy a second unit, right? And that can make a massive difference for you. But otherwise, you only need one unit. So don't go out ordering 20 miners, unless of course, you wanna go buy them and sell them later on eBay, 
which may or may not be profitable at this point. I think it could still be profitable, but not as profitable. To give you an example, I ordered mine back in May, I think on May 18th, and I received it on October 16th, right? So you've got a good five, six month turnaround time there that you can expect. And the prices have came down because when I originally ordered mine, miners were actually selling for $5,000 on eBay. That was $5,000. Prices are down to about 2,000 now, right? So I would expect them to probably be around $1,000 within four or five months. So still, you've got room to nearly double your money, right? If you wanted to go out and purchase 10 miners, sit on it for six months, you could double your money. And what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that you're gonna get back at least what you paid for them, right? So it's a great investment opportunity there too, right? It takes money to make money, but that is an option for you guys I want you to know about, right? So now keep an also, also keep in mind, this doesn't mean you want your miner all out on its lonesome either. Right? Helium miners actually do better when they can communicate with each other. All right. Now, obviously this miner is not gonna be right for everybody. If you're out in the boonies, I'm sorry, but this is not the miner for you. I've been looking at this map all morning, okay? And I found that based on the area you're in, it's gonna drastically affect what you're gonna expect to get out of this. All right, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, there aren't many devices for your hotspot to communicate with. And that's what's gonna directly impact how much money you're gonna make here, okay? So if that's you, you could probably turn the video off now because this isn't gonna be the right product for you, right? Now, don't give up that easy either. Uh, you may wanna just go look at the map and see what other people are getting in your area, right? Now, the best way to get an idea of how many coins you can get is to go to helium.com, click on the Explorer tab, okay? Now, I've got it pulled up right here. So let's take a look at a few cities and let's see what kind of returns they're getting, okay? So let's go and let's hop over to New York. Here we go. Wow, look at that. So geographically, locations are broken down into these hexagons you can see here, okay? So as you can see, it's pretty densely populated. I mean, there are a lot of miners. Look when you zoom out, there's a lot. So let's take a look at a few. Where are we at here? Let's go look down here. So just in this hexagon, there are 42 helium miners. <laughs> That's a lot. Let's take a look at what they're actually getting. And you'll notice that each miner has its own name assigned to it. And you can also see with these yellow lines what other miners it's actually able to communicate with. So we can go over here and click 30 day performance. $3.16. Not really worth it. <laughs> Right, let's, let's look at another spot. Let's look over here, okay? This one, for whatever reason, this miner is doing a lot better. Uh, we can see that this miner got 13 coins in the last 30 days. Not bad. That, that's about the threshold that I say it becomes worthwhile. You know, when you, you wanna be able to get at the very least you wanna get five coins a month, just to make it worth your while. Right, but anything over that is a bonus, right? So let's take a look. Let's go and look at the outskirts of New York now. Let's get out of the busy, busy city here. Let's just go out here a little ways and let's look at some suburbs. Here's New Brunswick, a little more of a suburb area. I see we've got one unit out here. Now, oh, see it says it's offline. Let's try somewhere else. Still a little populated. Eh. Let's go over here. We've got one miner out there. 
We've got one over here. Hmm, okay. Let's see what we got. This looks like it should be a nice little suburb over here. What is this guy getting? Okay, you can see this guy, he's getting about 12 per month. And he's got a few around him. That's still a pretty populated area. More than likely, your map is not gonna look like this, unless of course you live in a really densely populated area, maybe if you live in New York. But you're gonna see that most other states, they're not like this. So let's zoom out here now. Let's go look at, let's look at Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon, not Portland, Maine, Portland, Oregon. There we go. Okay. So you can see the city of Portland itself, pretty densely populated, a lot of miners. Okay. Let's see what we're getting here. This miner is getting about 11 every 30 days. And that's in the heart of the city there. Now let's look at some of the suburbs. See what they're getting here. It looks like a nice suburb area. This one is getting eight. So there's a little bit of variance here. How about, this looks, this looks like a pretty, this looks pretty suburban. This looks like a suburban area. See what we got over here. Low Taffy Guppy. That's an interesting name. Okay. 30 days, four coins in 30 days. So that's a hundred bucks, right? Let's go look at, let's look at Seattle. Seattle, Washington. Come on, there's only one Seattle. Where is it? Uh, Let's go over here. Yeah. This this is what I noticed to be maybe one of the second most densely populated areas with, was up here in the Northwest. But let's zoom out really quick. I wanna give you a quick picture of the entire country so you can see. Obviously you can see all these green spots. Those are your really densely populated areas. You're gonna to wanna to be close to one of these green patches for this to be worthwhile for you. You know, if you're out in the middle of Nebraska, you might not be worthwhile for you. Okay, so let's go, where were we going? We were gonna look at Seattle, right? Let's look at Seattle. Here we go. Okay, here's Seattle. So we got, a, here we go, we've got 24 over here, really densely populated, right by the waterfront it looks like. Um, what are they getting? Okay, this guy, in 30 days, he made a dollar and 88 cents. See, this is what I'm talking about. You don't wanna be in too densely of a populated area. You know, every once in a while you'll find one that's in these really densely populated areas that is doing really well, but the pattern I've noticed has been if there's too many miners near you, you've got a lot of competition, right? So how about this one? 30 days, it's done almost three coins. Okay, so let's look at a suburb, another suburb here. One last one. Okay. Let's zoom out. Where do we want to go? Uh, how about up here? How about Marysville? Okay, so look at Marysville here. And we've got a couple miners over here. Now look at that. Okay, this looks like a promising one. 30 days we've had, wow, look at that, 15. That's pretty nice. Okay, so we've got 15 miners in the last 30 days, 15 tokens in the last 30 days. Not bad. How about over here? In the last 30 days, we've got, not very much, but $40. Okay, how about this one? Let's see. We've got 10. Also not bad. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Obviously, you can go play around with it more and see what's working for you right? But obviously, like I was saying, it's not going to be for everybody. So 
After looking at this map a lot this morning, I have pretty much figured out you want to be in the suburbs to get the best return. And preferably, you want to be near a park, a main road, maybe a business park, a grocery store, somewhere that's high traffic. You want other devices to be 300 meters away or more, but you still want other devices near you, right? Now, I checked my neighborhood, and my neighbors are actually getting 30 coins per month in many cases, okay? So it just really depends where you're at, right? But the key is being close enough to transmit to other units, but you don't want other units encroaching in your hexagon, right? So if you're in a very rural area, you're not gonna get very many coins, right? Okay, folks, we are now going to unbox our miner. So let's take a look here, what do we have? Dun, 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 drum roll. All right. So, looks like we've got several components in here. So this came up all nicely wrapped in plastic, but for the purpose of this video, and for my sake, and so I don't look stupid in front of you guys, I went ahead and took off all the plastic beforehand. Everything was wrapped up individually in plastic, though. Uh, it was all packaged really nice. So, here it is. Now, remember, I ordered this on May 18th. Now, at the time, every other miner was on a 10 month or longer back order. Bobcat only accepted payments via crypto through kind of a shady Chinese company with virtually no support, uh, right? No better business bureau backing or anything like that. It's in China, right? So at the time I thought, hey, I'll give this a go and maybe I'll have it in July or August. Well, it's now October 16th and I'm opening it up. Uh, it showed up to my house on Friday it was delivered by DHL. Uh, they did want a signature, so I had to sign for it, but here it is. So the first thing that we see when we open this box up here is a nice quick start guide. We can see that printed over here, right? And it just tells you, hey, go ahead and download the app. It sounds like it's a pretty simple process, right? So it's pretty much plug and play. Um, you got a warranty card in there, which I've set off to the side as well. Nothing too complicated here, right? We've got a power cord here. We've got the unit itself with basically a hockey puck-like antenna, right? Now, the unit itself, in my opinion, it feels light and it feels cheap. Honestly, the opposite of what I was expecting. I was expecting something that looked sleek and was heavy, but as you can see, it's just cheap plastic. Doesn't weigh a whole lot. Uh, the unit itself only uses a couple watts of electricity, so I guess it doesn't need anything. And as long as it serves its purpose, who cares? It comes with mounting hardware in here in case you wanna put it up off the floor where animals can't get to it. Yeah, and I'll be using that. I've got a one-year-old Pomeranian who likes to mark his territory, and I'm in a 10-year war with him where he pees, I stick his nose in it, and then we go back and forth like that. So. Anyways, let's download the app, let's set this up, and then we'll be back. All right, so now we can see we've got the box all opened up here. I've got the app downloaded and opened on my phone. Okay, everything's laid out here. Uh, I didn't see this before, but here we can see we've actually got the antenna. Okay, and this looks like it's the base. They've put a protective cover on the bottom of it. I'm assuming you don't want this to get scratched. Uh, and it also helps it from sliding around. So, the app is telling us to go ahead and plug it in. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. I've already plugged the other end into the wall. Okay, and we've got a green, you know, yellow light here right off the bat. Uh, so it says the hotspot is ready when the light goes from red to yellow. So we'll give it a minute here to uh, go ahead and change colors. So we can see here, they've also given us a small tool here that we'll wanna use. And it looks like this is gonna go ahead and mount onto the top of the space here. So we'll go ahead and we'll start doing that. And we'll get this installed while this is booting up.
Okay, we can see here now that the light has turned yellow. It took about a minute to do so. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell it I'm powered up here now. It says use the provided pin to press the Bluetooth button on the back of the hotspot and hold for five seconds. Okay, so we'll take this tool here. And there should be, here it is, if you can see that. It says Bluetooth button. Okay, so we're gonna go push that button. You can feel the tactile feedback on it. And now let's scan. It's gonna ask for permissions here and we'll say go ahead. All right, it's now scanning for our hotspot. Hmm. It says no hotspot found, okay? So let's try something here. Okay, so I tried attaching the antenna. I ran it again. This was the message I got. So still no go. Uh, I've been following the instructions of the app expressly, but I actually pulled out this Bobcat Miner do and don'ts. And one of the things that it says is connect antenna first before powering on the hotspot. So I've gone ahead and powered this off connected the antenna, and now we're cycling it back on. So, ideally, as soon as this turns yellow, we're gonna do another scan, and it should register at this time. Okay, so there it goes. Let's give it a shot, and let's scan again. Okay, folks, I figured out what the problem was, or problems, I should say. Okay, first of all, I thought that I would follow an instruction manual instead of using common sense. Now, typically, I just, I'm the type of person who will just throw the manual out and go do common sense, right? Well, I didn't do that in this case, so that's how I got myself in this predicament. But I've hooked up an Ethernet cable now to the device, which I don't think that's what the problem was. The problem I was having was when you press that pin, you want to hold it for five seconds. So I've gone ahead and I followed the process, waited until the light turned blue, which signals that it's in pairing mode, and now it's been recognized. Booyah. So, we're now connecting to our miner here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's now asking which Wi-Fi network we want to connect the hotspot to. So that's nice. So it looks like we might not need to use that Ethernet cable after all. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my Wi-Fi network and put in the password. Done. Okay, it's connecting to the network now. Okay, now it's asking for location permissions. It wants to know where we're at. And for some reason, it thinks I'm in San Francisco. Oh, nope, there it goes. Now it's updated my location. Okay, so we'll get it just right here. There we are. Perfect. Okay, I've set my location now. Now it's asking us for a little bit of information about our device. Okay. So it wants to know what your gain is in decibels, and then it wants to know what your height is in meters, and that's going to be how high your antenna is. Okay. I'm assuming that's off the ground. That's what they want to know. How high off the ground is your antenna? So I'm going to leave mine as zero. If you guys can see that, okay? Okay. So now it says location fee. 
Your location fee, worth $10, has been prepaid. Confirm the location is correct and register your hotspot. So I've confirmed my location and I'm going to go ahead and hit register hotspot. So you can see now it's registering. So that did not work. Instead I got an error and I had to restart the entire process. This time I unplugged the ethernet cable, followed the instructions, and it booted up. So now currently my phone is registering the device, which it's been doing for about 10 minutes so far. Uh, I've got access to my wallet now, which has a balance of zero. Uh, and it looks like the miner is downloading an update. So at this point, it looks like everything is operational. Uh, we'll check in here one more time once I know everything's working. All right, so everything has been confirmed now. I'm actively mining. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you're not already a member, jump over to Team RVR dot com and join today you can use promotion code rvr1 and you can get 30 percent off if you are a member or you've been following glad you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys next time